favor. Thank you. We do not have any public or any public has left. <laughs> and the public has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> I 
took this job and never had the bandwidth to do it because of all the other things that were going on. So now I feel like this like is what? a good time. <laughs> um, are you looking for volunteers or extra support for that project? Or? Absolutely, particularly people that, um, yes, people with attention to details or, you know, it's going to be like, it's not like a lot, but it's going to need to be done accurately and keep things organized. And so you have to talk about whether we can find uh, volunteer students, you know, library school students, yeah. people interested in archives or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the metadata is fairly minimal. I mean, we're not going to be able to like, you know, it's not going to be a huge thing, but we definitely want to um, provide some identification to everything that comes through, particularly with like photographs and what have you, so that we can have helpful information to build the items. So yeah, if you know anybody. I'm going to send you the, I'm just going to email you the um, emails of the two history teachers over at uh, Hopkins, sure. one of whom okay. is in charge of the like, honors volunteer program. Like they have to have a certain number of volunteer hours anyway, but I mean if you can find, you know, students. That yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to gauge like how many yeah. hours we we'll actually have for them, but yeah. I know that and just from, like I said, we've just sort of been casually looking at what's around and um, like, so for instance, Alan, you know, has much more context for this than I do, but he was looking at, uh, you know, there are collections of, so the, the, when the, this, the center of time became part of the National Historic Register, there were surveys that were done where they went out and collected information on all the houses when they were built, they had a staff shop that was taken with each one of them. So, you know, this, and then there are, bunches of photographs of those houses. The thing that, that we have in our collection in the history room is like a Xerox of the photographs. So it's not as good you know, quality, but you have all the information there. And then you have like the photographs in another pile over in Town Hall. So the idea is to you know go through and link all these things up, that, that in particular, to match the house with a better photograph. And then Alan said that, <coughs> excuse my allergies, um, Alan said that the, um, that at some point in the 80s, someone had done yet, or maybe it was even before that, someone had done yet another round of photographs of the level to have pretty much all of the houses in town, because at that time they were all historic, they were all old. Um, so we, again, we want to like link up addresses to those and identify mm -hmm. them. And, and so that would be the kind of thing that we'd be looking to have volunteers do, like great, you know, matching up gravestones, the graves the cemetery records with the photographs that go with them, making sure that they're, you know, if they get separated, that they can so yeah, there's lots to do. We can't quantify it yet. But let, let me know if you have ideas. And yeah, send me that contact yeah, information. I did. Cool. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah. question? In terms of the quantity of stuff that you hope to digitize over time, do you have priorities for what you want to do first? Photographs because they might degrade? Other things that are. It's more, um, at this point, it's kind of more like the low hanging fruit. Well, a couple of things. It's, it's like, what do people ask us for? Okay. Um, and so, a lot of what we refer to the most when people come, particularly the people that come from out of town to do genealogy stuff, they want to know about who's buried in mm -hmm. the old Hadley um, Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And it's almost always that cemetery. It's never any of the other cemeteries. It's always that one. Mm -hmm. So, we have you know, the cemetery records for that particular. That particular cemetery, and so that's one of the things. You know, the um, Fred Oakley did the, that project. About, I don't even know what year when that was, but it was probably in the 90s. Um, and so we have a beautiful record of all those stones, a photograph of each one, tra transcription of whatever the text is, and it's legible. Um, so we'd like to get that on there so that people don't necessarily yeah. drive here from Montana mm -hmm. to see that stuff. They can just look yeah. at that one. Um, so things like that. I, we've been we get a lot of people looking for Hopkins yearbooks. So Hopeful, um, you know, Alan's been kind of speaking with the folks at the Hopkins Foundation because they have, you know, more complete collections of those things. He's been over to the school. He's been, as I said, involved at Town Hall. He knows everything that's in the Hadley Historical Society. So we're kind of like trying to get it. We don't yet have a full plan, but we're, we're kind of working on prioritizing that. But um, the part of it is going to be we don't like become overly ambitious the first time that we do this. Right, and then just start. Yeah, we want to kind of like get stuff out the door that we know that yeah. we can do, yeah. provide the metadata for it. Um, books are easy for BPL because they don't have to catalog them generally. There's already an existing yeah. catalog record mm -hmm. unless it's some really unique thing to mm -hmm. have, which we don't have that much of. Um, 
so we can do some of that. We should be able to just get our foot in the door with mm -hmm. having an online collection and then just kind of grow it over time. Um, this is a very robust and developed infrastructure for, for hosting all of that stuff, and then we basically just like you know, put the links on the page and say, go oh, here, this is all the happy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's minimal work on our part beyond, as I said, the cataloging part of it, creating the metadata to go with it. And, um, and just keeping it organized so we don't like mess up, you know, like use something that belongs to yeah. town hall or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's something that's kind of going uh, along in the background. And um, the other thing that I, I don't know if everyone here, I think I sent to everybody when it happened, but we received a, a very sizable request from the estate of Beverly Rhodes, yeah. who was um, one of our beloved library patrons came here for years um, and uh, one day they called from the town hall and said someone has dropped off a check and like what? And they said it's pretty big. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was for the amount of $126,429. So that was a, an incredibly generous gift um, from from Bev Rhodes. Um, so the, there was no, as far as I know, we didn't receive anything written instructions. We didn't so we're not aware of any limitations on how the money can be used. You know, it's been deposited in a town account. Um, and um, I did send her in her obituary. Um, she wasn't someone that I knew super well, but you know, she came in, you know, like a lot of people, she came in you know, weekly for ages and ages and ages. So um, it's very sad, but this is a, a very kind gift. And she also uh, gave a gift to the Happy Castle on Aging. So, um, I think that's more or less it. I don't really have um, much else to say other than that, with the, um, as I mentioned, I would like to keep the conversation going with Dan, the, the sign guy, the sign fabricator, to um, now that it's being productive for us, keep them going, getting the lettering done for the, for the you know, various rooms that need to be named uh, in a more legible way at a glance. Oh, this is the, you know, this is the meeting room rather than looking at a little plaque. That's mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a different issue. So I'm hoping that we can get that done in the next few months as well. Fingers crossed. Guys, super busy. Well, we did pick up those extra few names. So I looked at who came in, and then one of them, so then I cross-referenced with what I thought we had from before. So there was just one to get, um, and Pat confirmed that the book does actually exist on the wall. So we have some additional ones. Um, I used that opportunity to like, revamp my, uh, like the huge master list that I have. And I, we have about 10 donors from 2022. And a few of them are anonymous, have no information on them. But most of them need the $100 uh, you know, qualification. So I mean, if no one has any objection, I'll just put that wheel in motion I you know basically I took the the letter slash email that Courtney had sent around inviting people to the you know to fill out the form explain it a little bit obviously I had to change it because now the thing actually exists so I mean you know, I was able to say I hope you've been you know guy to see the, the wall um, I mean to be fair I think three of the folks are people who are already on the wall um, so it's like you know They've seen it, or if they've not seen it, they've already seen the form. Um, you know, so I don't think it's going to be a lot of big changes. But um, anyway, if no one has any objections, I'll just put that wheel in motion. And um, this idea that we could just send those folks with the additional like four or five that we picked up um, that will go on the post. So those additional four or five will go on the founders wall. And, and, and just as a practical matter, before Dan's attention gets yes. attracted away, he's you know not set up to do that. Yeah. We really like to get his attention and say, "Can you just yes?" Or you can send those forward along to him. Like, what do you want to do? The ones that I sent you this morning. I would, I would just assume send him all okay. of that rather than have yeah. to because he's just he's, he's not he's great. I, you yeah. know, I don't mind dealing with him, but it's just you know sometimes there are long lags. I mean, you send an email, yeah. oh, you know, a month later. So I feel like while he's kind of like in the mindset of doing yeah. this, let's just. Yeah, because yeah. we'll be up today, and then you know we'll deal with 2023 when it's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be my point. 
it's so, it's so much better. Well, I will I will put that in motion right away, and ideally get people back. I put a deadline of June fifteenth. I figured, okay, if you guys said yes today, and I got it out within the next two days, I'd give us a month. Um, but most of the folks on the list are known quantities, so. So for the ones that anonymously mm -hmm. donated, would you do a book for that that says anonymous donor? No. I mean, we could, but, but there's so many anonymous donors. Yeah. Well, not necessarily one for every donation, but just one that acknowledges that but anonymous, you said anonymous donors. donors. So, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I guess, but there's only, you know, like, we could make a list. There's probably a better way to do if we wanted to. I'm just trying to look. Well, this is my master list, anonymous, over time we've had. Um, uh, I think in part we use you're anonymous because we only put books up for people who filled out the form. Correct. So there were also lots of donors who donated so and weren't commemorated sure there because they ate. Yeah, some said I do not want to. Yeah. So we okay. only had six anonymous donors, three of them, four of them were, you know, $100 or more. But so. I also think on the flip side of it is if you, if you do one book spine that says anonymous mm -hmm. donors, then people know that they can contribute anonymously, you know, but still have, still feel like they did something, mm -hmm. like it wasn't ignored, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that, that only people who catch all. Yeah. For, you know, year over year, when, when we do the new work, which, you know, for each subsequent year, we could even have a thing that says anonymous donors, provided, you know, X number of dollars in mm -hmm. gifts to just say, like, that's, you know, anonymous donors give a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's a valid way to mm -hmm. support the library if you don't want your name to be recognized. Yeah, but I think it, it does deserve some recognition. I wouldn't put the amount on there because what is an anonymous donor? Is it only people who come through the system as anonymous or is it also the people who come through the system with a name but then they say, I don't want to have my name up? Right? You could so, do it. I mean, you could do it by year if you wanted. You could just say anonymous donors mm -hmm. 2021, anonymous donors. You don't know yeah. amount or anything, but just acknowledge that year after year there's people who contribute to the library. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you could always just stick an anonymous book on each, you know, that list that we're sending him. Anonymous donors. Anon anonymous founders. Anonymous, anonymous, yeah. anonymous founders, and it could be anonymous yeah. donors 2023, yeah. or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there was definitely at least one for the 2022 that was over 100, and then there was multiple for the, like, the founders. And those were individual, those were not. Oh, I actually don't know. There are different donor IDs. I mean, do, do, donation IDs. Anyway. I wonder if there is some way, back in the old days, there used to be tickler files. At some point, to consider what the cost of having one of these books made relative to the contribution and at what point do we perhaps consider raising the threshold? Yeah, I, and we did the math at the time, mm -hmm. and I think that's why we settled on 100 based on the, the like, the purported cost. Mm -hmm. I, I, you'll have to... Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> we'll but it's really my recollection, I was actually, I was talking to um, Megan Campbell the other day because she was in doing some volunteer stuff when we were talking about the wall. And I was relating how I couldn't remember what the figure was, but I, we both agreed that it was like, it was very affordable. So we yes. felt like it was you know, kind of a steal. Um, and then when I spoke to Dan, when he was installing the wall, I asked him about it and he was like, I, he was like, I don't remember either. So, what we're gonna but you saw the list. Oh, well, you, you probably didn't have the list that had the like the sort of money attached to it. I can pull that up. Um, but the vast majority of our donors, as David Cherkin 
split us it would be, the vast majority of those on the wall, you can just see the other sides of the books, but it's not even representative because not everyone got a book. The vast majority are of like the $100 range. Mm -hmm. And that was even over time. That was over was like five years of giving. Right. A lot of people actually like regularly meet 25, 25, 25, which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's sure. like a sustaining number at NPR. If you get $50 a year, right, that's $50 you don't have to go out and get. So over time it does, you know, build up if you collect it over time. It won't be the same case. So that's, right, that's not going to be the same going. Correct. But we really didn't have any. Like, nobody gave $10 last year. That just wasn't a thing. Hmm. But I also think we were just actively fundraising in different ways at the time, where there were opportunities to give $10, the pocket fundraiser. Right? I've got a lot of people listed on, listed on there as pocket fundraiser. $6, the donation of $6 pocket fundraiser. Mm -hmm. I'm only suggesting it because I think it should be thought about regularly, and it's easy enough to say, oh, we're not at the point where we need to make a change. Mm -hmm. I just I just don't want it to fall off the radar. That's mm -hmm. okay. all I'm yeah. suggest. Well, we'll write it down. <laughs> Tell us how much these are. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll be easier to see. This round will be easier to see, so we can wait for you. And it mostly all small. I have one other question relative to the event calendar, where we had talked about the opportunity to perhaps do some sciency programs with the Shar Smith money. I wondered if either Julia or Luna had. incorporated that in their planning for yeah, this so summer? Unfortunately, the, the, the stuff that we had hoped to, to bring, which would have been uh, like the Boston Science Museum um, stuff, that by the time I put them on it, it was all it was all hooked up for the summer. We have, do have one program that is, um, it's, it's an organization that we've used before, it's called Mad Science, it's just like a one day afternoon, you know, it's a couple of hours, it's not like a whole day thing or anything mm -hmm. like that, but we were able to, to do that. I, th I think it's going to be easier um, by virtue of the fact that we have to get the money from the community foundation and move it around. We have to we need to basically prepay them for this. So I think I've sent this over to the friends to pay. It's only like you know, whatever three three hundred bucks or something, and they've already committed money for for summer reading events. Um, so it'd be easier to do it that way because Sharon can just you know, write them the check, send it in the mail. I don't have to get my move money around from the community foundation here. But what I am going to ask them to do is to you know to work on scheduling some events throughout the year, not just for summer reading, but just throughout the year that fall within that permit. Okay. And of using the Charlotte's move money when we when I have a better sense of how much that's gonna cost and you know what we're proposing, then I'll come back and say I would like mm -hmm. to take whatever it is, five thousand dollars from you know the community okay. foundation. Yeah, that's Right, like you do mad science would come once a week, every Wednesday afternoon. And it could be right. I'm, hoping that, I'm yeah. hoping that I think these programs are fine, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can you know, set the yeah. argument. I'm just giving you an example. Exactly. Right. But we can then just say, hey, here's your whole $5,000, knowing that it's going to be spent over, you know, right. five way, months. Right, that's the way to do it, is to, to oh, yeah. as much yeah. as possible, just get the money for the year, and then yeah. you know, have it sitting there, and then you spend it as needed. Yeah. That's the plan. Okay, that's fine. Um, as I mentioned, I'm sorry, do you have anything else for director? I was going to mention uh, that I will be away on vacation from Friday 6.23 to Thursday 6.21. Uh, but I should be yeah, reachable or something this uh, fire. Hopefully no, not the reaching. Fires or all the fires. <laughs> you will be up on election plan? Yeah. Nice. All by yourself or with others? With the boy, I saw an but hopefully not getting Lyme disease this time. Ah. So that's where I got. I think that's where I got. Horrible so. this year. I've had, yeah, I've had multiple, not like literally like mm -hmm. bitten me yet, but I've had them all over. They're just everywhere. Yeah. 
that can't be outside of our family. Okay. As I mentioned in the correspondence that accompanied the agenda, Patrick's contract runs through the end of this month, and we're not going to be able, I don't think, to finish up the bits of it that we would like to review and perhaps consider and have it looked at by the powers that be. So I would like to request a motion to extend the existing contract through the end of August, through August 31st. Yes, someone. Second. I make the motion then. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then I second it for real. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, we're not going to get it done, especially with no. going on vacation. Like this. Not gonna to, okay, so and to extend it until eight forty one twenty three. Okay, and it, it it actually expires the end of June. Correct. Okay. All right. Eight thirty one. So who do we have to tell? Do we have to tell somebody over there in payroll so he gets paid or? I, I think, yeah, I think just, I don't, well, first of all, I don't know that anyone would even notice, but <laughs> over there, but, um, but yes, just saying that we agreed to, to extend this for two, two months yep. to, you know. I will convey that to Joan and Troy. Okay. Who's Troy? Troy is the, the new in charge of. Oh. Do we need to vote? I think we should vote, yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion. Thank you. That looks like glass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In my mind, we just did this, but it was like in the middle. It was like 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, and I was on like on the phone in a meeting in my yard. Yeah. And it still seems like it was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. But it's been three years. So weird, right? Well. My plan had been to consider board work organization and meeting times, and I had hoped that the full complement would be here to participate on, it seems to me we have two options. We can go ahead and rearrange the board, or we can do a continuation of the existing and then address it in July and I am happy to consider either option or anything else that anyone wants to propose. So um, I know that my friend Jess here is interested in relinquishing her duties and I told her I would be happy to do it um, but I also don't need to do it so I don't think like I know Joanne doesn't want to do it and I usually a brand new person, although you could speak to this better than I, is not interested in taking on the clerk duties because it's sometimes hard to pay attention while you're doing it. So um, I don't think either one of them will do it. So unless someone here wants to do it, like I just don't want Jess to have to do it again next month if she doesn't want to. So does anyone want, do you not want to be the chair and you want to be the clerk? Do you want to be the clerk? And I also said to Allison that um, I would be happy to be vice chair, <laughs> um, though it doesn't look like your responsibilities are onerous. Oh yeah, yeah. I would be. I would assume that someone else would take over that yeah. duty. But I'd be happy to take that. It's really not onerous. In exchange yeah. for someone else taking up clerk. Yeah, and I'm not saying I have to do everything tonight. I was proposing that if you if it's amenable, that we vote on the work position tonight so that Jess doesn't have to show up here next month and take notes. I would rather just do this anyway. I would rather just maybe do a temporary for the next meeting and okay. give the other two a chance to have a voice in it and not just sort of do it without them. Does that sound good to you? I'll just yeah, that's fine. And I can, I can do minutes for, yeah. The, yeah, just for do, the next. I'll just assume that I'm doing it just the way as if you were okay. sick or whatever. Okay. 
you will. When you see the end in sight and then you get sucked back in, it's just such a good feeling, you know? <laughs> With whatever it is, not yeah. this particular, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So I don't want you to have to do that. All right, then we will hold off on that. Um, I did have a conversation with John at the event on Saturday, but it was not quite so much on the, shall we say, this professional level. Um, given his background, it doesn't, nothing jumps out to me, but I didn't ask him if he had interest in any of these. Subcommittees, you mean, or just? Correct. Yeah. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what is his background? Um, he said that he used to have a record store. I forget if it was in Amherst or Northampton. Yeah, it was in Amherst. In Amherst. And in 2016, he got a degree in psychology, and he is now doing counseling, mostly couples counseling. Oh. Maybe he'd be good on the personnel subcommittee. That's sometimes counseling. <laughs> <laughs> the personnel subcommittee is process oriented, <laughs> not <laughs> product oriented. Yeah. Um, I had invited both Joanne and John to express interest in the then two subcommittees we had previously discussed and heard nothing from either of them on that score. Mm -hmm. After I sent the agenda out following a lengthy conversation with Patrick about relative to the donor wall and fundraising and the bequests um, having included that as a subcommittee, Joanne said she very much would like to participate at that level now that she has an inside understanding of friends and their fundraising she doesn't see library fundraising necessary to create any tension or conflict or overlap mm -hmm. um, so she's interested in that one of the things that Patrick and I talked about was, is there a way <clears throat> to um, come up with parameters in the way that you have parameters for the donor wall? Is there some other way that we would like to both encourage and acknowledge substantial bequests. I mean, we have the photograph and framed bit about Char Smith, and now we have this Bev Rhodes, which, I'm sorry, I didn't know her. Um, those are substantial amounts, mm -hmm. and there's part of me that would like to see rather than just little frames somewhere around a more substantial plaque of some sort that can be changed or can be added to where names of individuals who contribute above and I don't know I'm not imagining what the threshold would be. But that's one thing I would like to think about. And other ways, even if we are not engaged in an active campaign to solicit, but to let people know that we are very willing to either talk to them or have them make those kinds of gifts with or without um, restriction. 
So I think that needs some thought and probably other things that I haven't even mentioned or considered. And so Joanne very much would like to participate at that level. Um, I will see if I can call John. I will call John and have a conversation with him. I was just going to follow up on what you said. I think it's along the same lines of what you said, Susan, about like acknowledging that a non misdemeanor is a thing, right? If we had a, I'm just going to say plaque because I don't know what else to say, you know, uh, generous bequests by and then just list people who give us bequests. Whatever that amount is, like honestly, it just gives you a, we don't get that many bequests. It's not like we're going to have plaques and plaques full of people that we need bequests. So, I mean, even if we didn't have, a parameter, like a minimum amount for that particular thing, it would let people know, oh yeah, I could think of a quest to the library. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, too, um, when is the Mars meeting about whether or not we go ahead with mm -hmm. this next week? Okay. What are we going to do? They're voting on the, on the, the, whether or not to accept the a contract with the company that does that, that third party that does sort of like the, the yes. added functionality yeah. for the catalog yeah. and yeah. Yeah. also yeah. websites. Yeah. 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 But that is certainly something that could also be live on the web page. Yes. 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 Yeah. So that I think that we can kind of raise the profile and just to let people mm -hmm. know that we're open to this. We don't want their old car, although I just heard a thing about old cars, used cars being worth a lot. But anyway, um, but I think that's a quiet way to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that it, uh, at this point, having you know gotten to where we've gotten and, and been you know fairly successful with fundraising, some of it again was through no fault of our own. But you know, we have raised a lot of money, um, whether it's based on active fundraising or just through goodwill in the community. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point, it would be good for us to sit down on some subset of us and have a conversation about what is the, if not the strategy, but what is our feeling about fundraising and what role does it play? How active should it be? Should it be an active capital campaign at all times? Should the capital campaign tra change over to some other kind of ongoing campaign. Um, and I, I think we just really need to have a holistic conversation about it too. Because I don't think that we should, should go to sleep. I, I really think that, you know, having these resources as, you know, as we were saying at this, at this presentation on Saturday, it gives us a lot of flexibility and yeah. gives us a lot of freedom. So I think that um, keeping that up and, you know, we are going to have big, big expenses and a lot of that money will be depleted if we have to do something substantial to, you know, mm -hmm. deal with the roof or Get solar, or just get solar. Or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are things outstanding mm -hmm. that cost money, and so I think we should always be thinking about it. And, and I think it's it, it, we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel, but we maybe need to find some new, you know, interested parties that, that want to do this kind of volunteer work and um, just have an ongoing thing. That's my feeling about it. But I think we need to have a conversation about what that looks like and what it entails. Mm -hmm. So, if anyone else. I would like to work with Julian and Patrick. Let me know. Um, Susan and I just set up a date to meet to begin to talk about the director review process. Um, I will note that the contract says it's supposed to be completed in May. I think we're going to change that, right? We're going to change that so it fits with the budget cycle, wasn't that? Yeah. 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 Because we just did it, so we don't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we did it for the previous fiscal year. That ends in June. Correct. Right, and it was delayed for a number of a range of reasons, and we talked at some point about actually recalibrating the evaluation period. We ended up not doing that. Um, but if it's an evaluation that includes June, then you wouldn't want to do it in May. 
Well, I'm just saying that's what's written in the contract, which yeah. caught yeah. me by surprise. Because we're saying well, right. yeah, which caught me by surprise. And my thought was, oh, they're trying to make sure that they get all of the board members before anyone might cycle off. But our meeting hmm. tends to come at about the time of the election, so I don't know whether or not that would be assured. Yeah, I think that, I think if I recall back on Patrick, I think right now we're the only two people in the room who are here when we conceived of this concept of having you in a separate contract so you kind of be protected. Um, I think the only reasoning that went into it is that in order to evaluate anyone, like try not to think about Patrick, well, you need to have the evaluation done before the contract is expiring. So we just made sure that it wasn't done, you know, like in August when the contract was there. You know, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. I think that was a rationale. I don't think there was any big... Yeah. No, I mean, that's true. Wasn't, yeah, unfortunately, that's the thing. Like, we, we, it didn't really occur to me until I was going through the process every time of having to put together the budget that yeah. we hadn't... You know, that the pieces were all out of... They didn't yeah. make logical sense. And I don't think it was because... Yeah. There were probably some reasons to do it so that it was ready to, you know, sign on the dotted line for July 1 the new year and kind of keep it in sync with that, but it doesn't really work with the reality of budgeting. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's why I think we need to look at that when we when we discuss this. And I, I have some ideas about it personally that I will, you know, that we can talk about when we, whenever we talk about the the contract itself. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I personally think that it should be should be moved further into the year, but closer to you know that the review should happen from that's I think that should probably happen starting July 1 to review the previous year, have that be done, and then the contract is um, ahead of the budget, budget cycle and follows along with that. <coughs> I feel like whatever works practically is the best solution because, again, we it's like when you move into a house, you don't always like, you know, fill up your house immediately, you gotta live in the house for a while to see what's really gonna work. And so we had to do something. We had to get you a contract, we had to have an evaluation process. But I, yeah. I don't I don't have a feeling that anyone is led into it. No. And I and, and I this is lost in the midst of time. I don't remember why we did this because I was actually hired in November mm. and then I had a contract, but it was like a nine-month contract or six. I don't remember what it was. It was like some odd month. It wasn't even like a full year, I think. And then it, we got onto this like fiscal year, fiscal year yeah. cycle. And from there, I had a three-year contract. Then I had a yeah. three-year contract. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the thought process would be, was on the on the trustee and when that was put together. But yeah. just probably to see if I would you know, <laughs> through nine months. Well, yeah, we probably just wanted to make it go for the case of the year. I don't remember. Maybe Joanne does. Now that Joanne's back, we're getting a lot more institutional memory back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hopefully so. Hopefully she hasn't forgotten everything. <laughs> like I have. I have too. <coughs> maybe between us. Which, because we forgot, suggests to me that there's no real reason. We just had to pick something. It's just sort of like, well, we're going to pick a date. Right. July 1, that makes sense. So. Right. And you don't, there's no documentation of. Of notes. I'm sure we're back in the minutes. I'm sure in a binder in the office. I mean, we could, we could definitely yeah. look at that, but I don't necessarily know that it's that illuminating. Versus moving the evaluation earlier makes sense. Like, I know why we did that. It's right. because of the budget. Sure. That makes sense. Yes. And that's why I remember it, because it makes sense. There was a reason we chose this. We didn't just decide to do something. Arbitrary. Yeah, no. No, I can follow that logic. Okay. Um, I am not aware of anything else that we need to do. I've said my new thing already under the conversation about keeping the momentum going. So that's all I have. Well then maybe 
July will be a little bit more substantial. What's the date for the July 11? Is that the 11th? Okay. Yes. Last year, didn't we skip August? Yes. We did. We gotta make that decision in July. Mm -hmm. I, I think it will depend on where we are with the contract negotiations and approvals and whatever. Okay. Because I believe everyone, all of the board members need to sign it as well as Pat. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Yes.